Okay, so today I'm going to do a quick review of binary search trees. Presumably you've seen them before. Um, and the goal here is sort of I'm on my way to B trees. Um, this is part zero of a B tree talk. So in a binary search tree, we have a bunch of nodes in a tree. It's a rooted tree. The value at the top is the root. And uh, each node can have up to two children where within each node's right subtree, you'd expect to find records with keys larger than the key in the root or larger than the key in the, the node we're talking about. And within a node's left subtree, you'd find nodes with keys smaller. Okay, so in this case, everything in five's left subtree has a key smaller than five. Everything in 20's right subtree has a key larger than 20. And everything in 10's left subtree has a tree smaller than 10. So that's going to hold for any, any node in the tree. Okay. So if we want to search within our uh, binary search tree, in this case, let's say I want to search for a six. Well, first I compare six to the root. I'm always going to start at the root. So six is larger than five. I go to five's right subtree. Six is smaller than 20. I go to 20's left subtree. It's six is smaller than 10. Go to 10's left subtree. Six is smaller than eight. Go to eight's left subtree. And I've now found six, right? So I basically just walk down the tree and by checking, the value I'm searching for against the node as I walk down, I can tell, oh, do I search the left tree or the right tree or have I found it already? So in this case, great. I found it. That's search. Okay. Now let's say that we want to insert. Insert's going to start just like search. Okay. So I'm going to start at the root. Compare 11 to 5, it's larger. 11 is smaller than 20, it's larger than 10, it's smaller than 12. And in this case, I go, oh, well, 12 has no left subtree. If I wanted to search for 11, I would look in 12's left subtree. But of course, there is no left subtree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a left subtree. And I'm just going to put it in there. And there we go. I've now made 11 12's left subtree. And insertion is always going to go like that. Insertion is always going to take a value and insert it into a new leaf. You're going to get down to a node. You're going to try to go to a, uh, another node that doesn't exist. You're going to take the value you're inserting, insert it at that, at that new leaf that you just created. How about deletion? OK, so let's say I want to delete the number 7. Great. Compare 7 against 5, it's bigger, smaller than 20, smaller than 10, smaller than 8, larger than 6, 7. I have found it. In this case, 7 happens to be a leaf, and deleting from a leaf is easy. I just get rid of it, right? What happens if I want to delete something that happens to have some children, or in this case, one child? So if I want to delete the number 2, great, start at the root. Compare 2 against 5, 2 smaller than 5. Hey, I found the node 2. 2 happens to have a child, but it only happens to have one child. So what happens here is, I mean, I found it, and I can just go, well, let's pretend it's not there. Let's, let's just get it out of our tree, because look, negative 5 is smaller than 5. If 2 wasn't there, this tree works just fine. We clean that up a little bit. And now, two's not in the tree anymore. It's been deleted from the tree. No problems. Okay. So, what happens if you want to delete a node with two children, like 20? My advice is you shouldn't do that. Never, never delete a node with two children. I'm joking. Okay. So we want to delete a node with two children, that's fine. We start at the root, 20 is bigger than five. We go down, we found the node that we want to delete. What we're going to do now is we're going to search in 20's right subtree for the value which is bigger than 20, but the smallest value bigger than 20, okay? So I go to 20's right subtree, that's 30. Now to find the smallest value in that subtree, I just keep on going left, 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 until I can't go left anymore. So I go left from 30, left from 25. I can't go left from 22 anymore. 
it doesn't have any left subchild. Okay? So in this case, 22 happens to be a leaf. What do I do with that value? This is called the successor of 20. Well, within the tree, 22 can sort of structurally take 20's place. Why? Well, everything in this tree, which is larger than 20, is also larger than 22, excluding 22 itself. Everything that's smaller than 20 is also smaller than 22, excluding 22 itself. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take 22, I'm going to put it in 20's place, and now I go, great, I have this, uh, I have this leaf, and I can just cancel that leaf and get rid of it because I know how to delete a leaf. Now 20 is gone. So now let's say I want to delete 22, just to go through another example. Great, 22, I start comparing against 5, I go to the right subtree, 22, hey, find the value in the tree which is bigger than 20, the smallest value larger than 22. Great, go to 22's right subtrial, keep going left until I can't go left anymore. I found in this case another leaf. Swap that leaf with 22, with 22 and then delete it, right? So this just, I've deleted this node, now 30 has only one child. And now 22 is gone from the tree and it's deleted. Last deletion example, now I want to delete 25. This is like the promotion that nobody wants to get. I keep on deleting whatever node happens to get here. But in this case, I go, great, 25 is bigger than 5. 25 is bigger than, uh, it, it, there, I found 25. Let's go to 25's right subtree. Great, 25's right subtree has a 30. 30, I want to go left until I can't go left anymore. Ah, oh, I can't go left at all. 30 has no left subtree. Now notice, 30 is not a leaf. 30 has a right subtree. It's not a leaf, but it has no left subtree. It is the successor to 25. Now, just like before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of structurally swap the 25 and 30 nodes. And now I'm going to delete this 25. Now, it's not a leaf. Before it was a leaf, I could delete it easy. But now it's not a leaf. Well, it only has one child. And we know that deleting a node with just one child is easy, right? So I can delete a node with just one child just as almost as easily as I deleted a leaf. So I do that, okay? So here we see um, the successor of the node that's being deleted, the binary node that you're deleting, the successor is always going to be either a leaf, which is easy to delete, or a node with just one child. Why? The successor cannot have a left subchild. I keep on going left until I can't go left anymore. It can't have a left subchild. So it either has one child or no children. So deleting the successor is one of the original easy cases, either zero children, the leaf case, or just one child. It's easy to delete that successor. Okay? There we go. We finished delete. So what can you do uh, with binary search trees other than, you know, draw little robot-like things, maybe? Um, all right. Well, you can use them to store things, to look them up fairly efficiently. What's the runtime? Well, the runtime is the depth of the tree in the worst case. But if I give you a bunch of random elements, or if I give you a bunch of random numbers, or numbers in random order to insert into the tree, um, the expected depth of the tree is logarithmic. So if I, if I happen to give you sort of nice, well-ordered, you know, randomly ordered data, and you just insert it into the tree, let's not worry about deletion, you just insert it into a tree, then you can insert and delete in logarithm, or sorry, insert and search in logarithmic time because the expected depth of the tree is logarithmic, okay? What do you do if you have duplicate values like, um, when I said we insert, I said, I assume that we get down to it. What happens if I actually find the value that I'm inserting? Probably depends on your application. Do you want to allow yourself to store duplicates or not? In some cases, you just may say, well, I don't want duplicates in the tree. I'm either replacing the old value in the tree if there's a duplicate. It's sort of application dependent. Um, if you, or maybe just don't want to store the new duplicate. If you do want to store duplicates, do they go in the left subtree or the right subtree? I would say the right subtree. Why? Well, if you build a tree by insertion 
and you insert duplicates into the right subtree, and then you do an in-order tree traversal, probably you've seen those already if you've seen uh, binary search trees before, um, but you do an in-order tree traversal to get the elements of the tree in sorted order. If you insert into the right subtree, your tree will be, your sort will be stable. Um, when we come to mention what a stable sort is, it'll give you a stable sort. Basically, if you put something into the tree later, it will come up later in your sort. You know, ties go to whatever order things got put into the tree. If you put things into the right subtree. For lack of any reason to put it into a left subtree, that's sort of maybe a slightly obscure reason, but I have no reason to put it in the left subtree over the right, and I can think of at least that one reason to put it in the right instead of the left, so I'm going to say let's put it in the right subtree if you want to store duplicates. Thanks.